Let's talk about probability. Probability is the likelihood that something's going to happen. So the way that you calculate it is going to be the number of ways that it can happen divided by the number of ways that any outcome could happen. So it's a very confusing sentence, but let's start by looking at A. A die is a very, very easy thing to look at with probability because it's six-sided. You've got six sides to it. One, two, three, four, five, and six. These are all the different possible outcomes that could happen when you roll a die. So for part A, the denominator is going to be six because that's the different number of outcomes we could get. But in terms of getting what we want, well, we only want a five, and there's only one of those. So our numerator is going to be one. And again, that's the most basic form of probability. Really, you could also get into uh, heads or tails. You've got a one out of two chance of getting heads and a one out of two chance of getting tails. So let's jump it up a little bit. For part B, we're rolling a six-sided die, but now all we care about is getting an even number. So we still have six in the denominator because there are still six outcomes we could have. But now all we care about are those two, four, and six. So with three of those being possible, we can reduce it down to one half. So six sides isn't really that difficult. Deck of cards though, with 52 different cards, it's gonna be a lot harder to choose something from that. So in this case, we wanna draw specifically the ace of spades. Now out of deck of 52 cards, there's only one ace of spades. So the probability of us picking that one ace of spades is one in 52. And again, we're gonna slightly modify it for that part D. For drawing a diamond, well in case you don't know, there are four suits. You've got, I'm gonna draw these very poorly, a diamond, a heart, you've got a club, and last but not least, you've got a spade, which is kind of like a heart with a tail on the end. Well, all we care about is getting a singular diamond. So we want one of those four suits. Now, what's interesting about a deck of cards is I said previously that there are 52 cards. Well, if you actually go through and you count how many diamonds there are in that deck of cards, you're going to end up with 13. So we could have 13 possible cards that we could choose from. And actually if you reduce down that fraction, so 13 divided by 52, you're going to end up getting 1 fourth. So there are multiple ways to look at probability. You can think of it as kind of a whole. We've got four different suits, all of them evenly split in those cards, and we only want one of them. Or you can count up the number of diamonds inside of that deck of cards. So all of these are dealing with one possible thing. We want one even number. We want one five. We want one of the cards from that deck of cards. But once we start talking about multiple things that we want in that outcome, it can get a little bit more confusing. So let's look at different possible things. Let's look at a couple of and statements here. So as I go through here, I'm going to use a little bit of notation. I'm going to talk about the probability of something happening. So the probability of situation A happening. And then there's also the probability of situation B happening. So if I want the probability of situation B and A, sorry, that does not look good. Let me erase that real quick. Probability of situation B and the probability of situation A happening, I can look at it as the probability of A and B happening. You might see a couple of other books or a couple of other notations saying the probability of A and B, kind of an upside down U. Here I'm just going to use probability of A and B just for the sake of ease. So for part A, we're going to roll a six-sided die twice, and we want to get even numbers both times. So it turns out if we want the probability of situation A and of situation B, which is that we get an even number and an even number, we're going to have to figure out the probability of A and then multiply it by the probability of B. Because we want both things to happen. And when you multiply two fractions that are less than one together, you're going to end up with still something less than one. It won't be guaranteed that we get it because it's actually harder. So the probability of us getting an even number, well, we got that before. There was one 
out of two chances that we're going to get it. Half of them were even numbers, half were odd. Probability of it being even again, well, one and two again. And here's what I was saying about multiplying those fractions less than one. One half times one half, when multiplied together, gives you one fourth. Which makes sense. If we want to roll two die and both of them be even, it's going to be a lot harder than rolling one die and getting that one to be even. So now we're going back to that deck of cards. And we want two different situations, the probability of A and the probability of B. Well, situation A is to get a red card. Situation B is to draw a club. So again, we're going to have to do the situation, sorry, the probability of situation A times the probability of situation B. A deck of cards is made up of two different colors. You've got red and black, and we want one of those colors. Club, just like with diamond, there are four different suits. We want one of them. So now our probability of that happening is 1 in 8. Now notice that it says replace that card. It's actually a very, very important word. We replaced that card. And you're going to see why in this option C here. So in part C, we want the probability again of two separate things. Probability of A and the probability of B happening. But here's the thing. For A, we've got that whole deck of cards. We want to get specifically a king. But for B, we're missing that king. We don't replace it. So now instead of 52 cards, we're going to have 51. And here specifically, we want a 10. So nothing changes for the king. There are still four kings out of a deck of 52 cards. But now the 10, there are four 10 cards, but only 51 cards. So when we multiply, again, to multiply fractions, you're going to go straight across. You've got 16 out of 2,652. Some of you guys might recognize it's probably easier to reduce this first. That'll just make the numbers look a little bit nicer. But now as we reduce this fraction, we're going to do 16 divided by 2652. Now I'll notice that there's an even number in common there. Most likely there's going to be a 4 in there as well. But when you reduce it down, 4 over 663. So that's not very likely that you would end up drawing a king, don't replace it, and then draw another 10 there. Sorry, not another 10, the first 10. So the idea here, this is that multiplication rule. As you're going through, it's going to be more difficult to do and statements. So you're going to have to multiply them together, which gives you that smaller probability of things happening. And that's the whole idea behind probability. You look at how many different ways your outcome could happen divided by the total number of outcomes for any situation in there.